Hi, today I'm going to do a tutorial showing you how to create a style of cause and then save it as an auto text. I explain what a style of cause is in my tutorial before you start an action. So I'm not going to get into too much detail about it here. I do want to show you three samples of a style of cause and the reason that I want to show you that is that the style of cause can have a different format depending which court that you are filing your document in. So you will want to look at the appropriate court forms before you create a style of cause. Now the only reason that you would maybe want to do this is that it is easier in Word to create your documents sometimes than using the forms. In the case of the Provincial Court of British Columbia, I recommend using the forms that are on the Provincial Court website only because they tell you how many copies you need, they are labeled as to which copy belongs to whom, which party. When I say that, I mean if there are several defendants, it automatically basically makes all the copies that you need to serve and it's very straightforward. So that format is very easy to follow. And they also have a filing assistant on the Provincial Court website and, and video tutorials to show you how to use their forms. I'm only using a set, showing you a sample of their style of cause just to show you the difference between the different courts and how the style of cause looks. So in the Provincial Court, they have a box for the registry file number and the registry location. And you'll notice in the Supreme Court of British Columbia civil matters, they have just a line for each one. And this is the family matters as well down here. And the document name is at the top before the court in the provincial court. And in the Supreme Court, the document name is after the style of cause and centered in the middle of your document. And in the provincial court forms, if you have more than one claimant or more than one defendant, there is an option to add another party. And if your party is a, an individual or a corporation, that will also determine which link you're going to use to add your parties. When you have a company that is a defendant or a claimant, you need to conduct a corporate registry search to use their legal name. And that's all explained in my tutorial before you start an action. So basically in the style of cause for the Supreme Court of British Columbia civil matters, you'll notice that the difference between the family and the civil is that the claim the plaintiff is referred to the person who is starting the action is called the plaintiff in the Supreme Court of British Columbia civil and in family matters they are called the claimant and in provincial they are also called the claimant then the people who are being sued in provincial are called the defendants and civil they're called the defendants but in family they are called the respondent or respondents depending on how many you have so that is the difference between the different courts. So you'll want to make sure if you're going to use Word, Microsoft Word, which is what this tutorial is based on. Unfortunately, I am not going to do a tutorial on all Word formats or Word platforms. I'm only doing it in Microsoft Word. So uh, if you have another Word platform that you're using, then you're going to have to figure out how to cut and paste. And normally what I do, and I'll do a separate tutorial for that, is I do a copy and paste, and then I don't have to worry about making mistakes on the form. If you recreate it, you're going to want to make sure that you have the form correct and you're not missing anything, because it does have to be in the form that it is prescribed under in the rules. So don't use that form a format from online either. If you find a sample document to follow, make sure that you're using the same form that is currently in the rules of court. Okay, and there are links to that in before you start an action, I explain where you get the forms and where you can look for that. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and create a style of cause in a new document and show you how to save that as an auto text so that you don't have to type it over and over again and also it eliminates any errors occurring because once you have those names correct you can save them and you don't have to retype it. So we'll just go to a new document. I'll use control N and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to change the page layout so that the margin is not one inch and space does make a difference in your documents when you type them. You may not want to want two pages and if you can fit it all onto one page that's fantastic. Now there are rules as to the size of font that you should have in your document. So go and read the rules of court in relation to that as well. So at first, first thing I'm going to do is go into the page layout. I use quick keys. If you press the alt key, you'll see you'll get all these tiles up on the top here. Now each one of these tabs has different options underneath them for you to utilize in within your document. Now I know that the page layout is under it has the margins on it so I type P which is the letter under that tab and then you'll see here we have margins it has an M under it so that's where I'm getting these numbers from and I will tell you what I'm doing so M and what I want to do is I want to have a 0.5 top and a 0.5 bottom. Now you may not have that setting which is up here which is highlighted. You may not have that on your document if you did not recently change your document to have those margin settings. So you would go into custom margins and then you would basically change them here. You could go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, I'm using the tab key and I do want that left and right at one inch. I believe that that is a rule that they should be there. So we'll say okay. And now you'll notice that my cursor has come up to the top. The other thing that I want to do is I want to go into my paragraph formatting. I'm going to highlight that return. Now what happens is if I had two returns and I only highlighted this return, my formatting would basically only apply to the paragraph that I have highlighted. So that's good to know if you have some paragraphs that maybe you want to have some different formatting for. Maybe you're working with one and a half spacing and you want to change it to single spacing for something, then that's how you would do that within your document. You could just highlight one single return and change it at that point. Now the contents, the style of cause can be single spaced. However, I believe that the rules state that the rest of your document should be one and a half spacing. But like I say, go and look at the rules that could have changed from the time that I do this tutorial. And that holds true with everything. If you're hearing me talk about rules in a tutorial, make sure you go and check and make sure that that rule has not been repealed or it has been changed, okay? So I'm gonna go back to changing to single um, spacing to do my style of cause. And I know that the paragraph formatting is in home. If I use my alt key, I use H. And if you look over here, paragraph is under all these tiles, but this is the box that brings up the dialog box. And you can use your mouse if you want to as well to get that. And the reason that I use the quick keys is that taking my hand off of the keyboard and using the mouse is a lot slower than typing. I'm explaining right now, so it doesn't appear that way. But once you do get to know these quick keys, you automatically do it. You don't even have to look at the tiles. So what I want to do is if you look down here at spacing, I want to change my before and after to be zero. And Obviously, if you wanted more space before two paragraphs, you would click on these arrows and it will put them up in increments of six, or you could just type the number in it as well. I'll do that for the after. So you can tab into the next one and then I just say point. Now I tab over here because I also want the line spacing to be single. You'll notice that there's an underlined 
letter N in line spacing. So if you use Alt N, that will give you the drop down box for all of your options. And if you want single, you can just type the first letter. So if I wanted double, I could type D, but I'm a, I want single, so I type S, and then I change that to single. And then just press your Enter key, and now your spacing here is set at single. So I'm going to use a Control R, and here I'm going to put court file number. Now, if this is your first document, you obviously won't have a court file number because the court registry places a stamp on your first document that you send in and that is your unique file number and it's very important that that number is correct because you do not want your documents placed in the wrong court file. Now I'm sure that the registry staff must compare your number with your style of cause but you don't want to take that chance that it doesn't get in the right file and also you mistakes happen so just make sure that you have the correct file number and creating this auto text will avoid that now if I don't have a file number I'm going to use the control and I'm sorry the shift and the underline key to draw a line and of course after you file that first document you're going to come home and that's when I would suggest that you make the auto text after you put in your number that you were assigned so let's pretend that I was assigned this number and then I need to put the court registry and I have a list of court registries in the video description and you can choose the one that is nearest you and so I'm going to pretend that I am using the Vancouver Court Registry and then the next thing is I want to open up that space so it's not so crowded and close there so I use a control zero and that will open and close the space so I want it down just a little bit I also want to have the name of the court in bold so control B if you can see up there on the options I'm just pressing it repeatedly so that you can see that turns on the bolding and that's how you know that you're actually in bold so then in the Supreme Court of British Columbia now don't type in the Supreme Court of BC spell that British Columbia right out then I'm going to turn off that bolding control B and you'll notice that light went off now I'm going to go over to the left margin and I'm going to um, set also a tab of one inch and to do that I know that the tab is under the paragraph box down at the bottom you'll see on the bottom left you'll see tabs alt T gets me into tabs I want to set a one inch tab so I just type one in tab stop position and type alt S as you see down below you can set clear or clear all set is alt S because S is the underlined letter I press return and now I type claimant because that's the format that the family court follows and then I'm going to do a B and this is where you would add the name of the person who is starting the uh, action I'm just going to use a fictitious name I'm going to turn that bolding off and then we'll say end and you don't want that capitalized well it doesn't really matter I'm sure it's not the end of the world but I'm not going to capitalize it and um, I'm actually doing this wrong sorry I'm thinking of the provincial court form because I just looked at it so we're going to look at respondent type respondent and that would be the name of the person that you are suing and we will just use a fictitious name again and then you would do a control E and this is where the I'm going to do a control B and a control U to bold and underline and this is where the name of your document would go and because you're creating this as an auto text entry you would want to um, just have name of your document so that you know to put your document name there and I will you could actually say here just for a note for your type name of document now you'll notice that I did my formatting in here I'm going to tr control B and control U to turn them off if you do that right now it's one last step that you have to do when you're creating your document so the other thing that I'll want to do is change 
my spacing so that the contents of my document itself are set at one and a half. So go into Alt H, P, G, go down to Alt N, and then use the down arrow key to get and tab out of there to get to one and a half lines. Press your return key, and now the spacing is set at one and a half. And I notice that that's a, a large space opened. I'm just going to close that and open it again. So Control Zero opens and closes that space. So usually what people do when they type documents is they'll type their paragraph and then they'll do a return and then they'll type their next paragraph. I, I don't like to do that. I just set my spacing and type. And then that way it's one less key to type, which I don't know, maybe keystrokes matter but to you, but they do to me. And I just find it's easier to format your document when you don't have a bunch of uh, paragraph returns that may have some formatting in it that mess up your document and I don't think I don't know if that's going to make any sense to you but I told you before that your formatting is saved within your return so sometimes you change the formatting and that extra space can make it inconsistent formatting so basically that's why you want to not use returns in between your paragraphs for the space okay okay so um, now that I've made my style of cause and I have my number I come home I put my number in then to go to the top of my document I press control home and then I can use the control shift keys and the down arrow key to highlight this part the parts that I want to be saved for my style of cause including that paragraph return because it has the formatting change to one and a half spacing. It's just one last step I have to do. So um, another way to highlight your document fast as well, since I only have this style of cause in my document and no contents below this return, you can use your control shift and end key and that will highlight everything from the cursor position to the end of your document. So to make an auto text entry, now what I want to do is I want to go into insert. I use Alt N and if you look at the right hand side, you will see quick parts and there's a Q tile underneath that. So I'm going to type Q and then drops the down pops the drop box and you'll see auto text entry. So I just type A. And then down at the very bottom, you'll say, see save selection to auto text gallery. I type S and what it does is for the name, it will put in the first words that it sees. Now, sometimes that will work for your auto text entry, but in this case for me, I would not want it to be called court file. I would want it to be called style of cause. So you can just type that in there and then press your return key. So now, what happens is whenever I want to create a document, I'll use control N and I can just start typing style and you'll notice that this box, gray box pops up. So as soon as that pops up, just press your enter key and there you go. Everything that you typed, including formatting, is going to be within your document. You'll notice that this document has the page setting at uh, one inch so you will want to go back into your page layout and go back to your margins and now if you've set that 0.5 and 1 it's already highlighted you just press the return key and there you go you've got your document back to 0.5 at the top and 0.5 at the bottom okay so there is one more step as well in saving your auto text entry and that is you when you go to ch to close out of Microsoft Word for the day it will bring this message up changes have been made that affect the global template normal do you want to save those changes it'll either say save or don't save or cancel you do want to save those changes because you want to have that auto text entry available the next time that you come into Word so I'll show you what I mean by that I'm going to say say well actually 
yeah, I will say save it because then I'll show you how to delete as well in case you make a mistake to your auto text entry. So I'm going to say save and then I'll show you what will happen when you come into Word again. So here I am back in Word again. I've opened it up on another day. And if I type start to type style, you'll see that the gray box appears. I press return and there is my style of cause. Now if I hadn't saved the global template, then it would not be there for me. Now I believe that you can set in your file options. If you don't get that message, look in your file options, which is under file here, and you can set it so that it asks you that each time so that you know to save it in your global template. Now, let's say that I want I made a mistake in my style of cause or I want to delete a, an auto text ent entry. To do that, you want to go back into that insert tab and back to quick parts and back to auto text. And then you'll see here you have the names of your documents that you have in your auto text. Now I want to deal with style of cause. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to say organize and delete and then make sure that the name and you can make this bigger if your name is longer or you have some that are the same. So I'm on style of cause and if you look down here, you can edit the properties, delete or insert. So I want to delete that. I don't really need a John Doe taking up any auto text entry. So I delete that. It says, are you sure you want to delete the selected building block? Yes, I do. And then I close. So I hope that this helps you and I hope that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any other tutorials you'd like to know how, if you'd like to know how to do something within Word, leave a comment and I'll see if I can help you and prepare a tutorial for you. So have a great day.